Hello and welcome to Calhoun County's Most Wanted. I am Susan Shipman. I am not John Garlic and happy to be here as guest host today, welcoming in the sheriff. Hello, sheriff. It's always good to be on the show, Susan, and you do look much better than John, so we appreciate that fact to make our time here a little more enjoyable. Thank you very much. He and I are about the same height, so the chair works. Well, the yeah. chair works, that's yeah. good. So that's how good. was your uh, long weekend? Did you have a long Mem weekend? Memorial Day was great. It was very quiet, which means hopefully everybody in Calhoun County was safe, and that's the goal for what we do. And uh, thank you for all the uh, sacrifice that our veterans have done for us. Many have paid the ultimate price for us to be able to live in a free country, and I'm very thankful for that. Yes, indeed. I was reflecting on that when I was out feeding the chickens. I can have chickens in my front yard because someone made me free and I'm so grateful for that. Absolutely. Okay, so um, let's see about our lineup. Look, we previously on Most Wanted arrested Hallie Johnson. We've always had at least one and we're thankful that. We've never had a zero and that brings our count up to 5,191 people arrested all because somebody was willing to help us and we're very appreciative for that. We cannot do it alone. It is a community effort. Outstanding, never a zero. And so if there happened to be a zero one week? Uh, well, we would tell the truth, you know, but we're gonna look extra hard to make sure we don't have zero. <laughs> yes, indeed, all right. Well, very good. Okay, so we'll be coming up with the first part of the lineup here after the break. Hope you'll stay with us. This portion sponsored by Abe's Ace Bail Bonds, 256-831-0074. Donnie Maddox Jr., Anniston, Alabama, probation violation, possession of controlled substance. Amare Hall, Anniston, Alabama, probation violation, possession of controlled substance. Kathy Chandler, Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, possession of controlled substance. Kiviante Bush, Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, obstructing justice using false ID. Virginia Hester, Jacksonville, Alabama, failure to appear, attempt possession of forged instrument second. If you have any information about these cases, please call 1-833-251-7867. So that was the first half of the lineup. I hope you saw somebody you knew and make the phone call to the Sheriff's Department. You call, they haul. So mm -hmm. we've got some special guests here today. We have Ron and Sean from the Punisher's uh, Motorcycle Club, chaplain and president, as I understand it. And you guys have got an event coming up that you want to share, correct? That's correct. Wonderful. Ron so and Sean. We are I looking forward to uh, hosting an event for the ARC on June 17th. Uh, just a little bit about us. Uh, we are a local law enforcement motorcycle club here for the Anniston Oxford area. Uh, we've done a lot of charity rides uh, for some of the law enforcement officers with Oxford PD. We've had uh, heroes cookouts for all the departments here locally. Uh, we've been going since April of 19. Um, so the name, so I got to ask about the name. It's not something you come up with. This is a, a national motorcycle yes, club. Yes, we are worldwide. Um, the club actually started in July of 99 um, up north and our international president has grown it uh, to where now we are worldwide. Wow. Wonderful. See that's bigger than national. Yeah, we're bigger <laughs> than that now. Bigger than that. That's, that's great. And for the purpose of? Uh, Benevolent Association of Police, Military and Fire. Um, we do uh, charitable organization uh, we do rides for uh, all military, police, and firefighters. Uh, we're comprised of all of those uh, as well. And then we have an area that we call like-minded. Do y'all let firefighters in? The we do let firefighters in. <laughs> it's um, a hot subject. It's it a is a hot subject. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. But yes. um, for the ride, um, June 17th, uh, we'd love to get the community involved, help us uh, support the ARC and what they do. Uh, we'll be meeting at Hooligan Harley-Davidson that morning. Um, we'll have lunch, um, 
kickstands up. It'll be 1 p.m. Uh, we're going to do a nice scenic ride out in the community um, to Piedmont and back. Uh, we'll be meeting at Golden Springs uh, Baptist Church afterwards. Uh, we'll do the uh, door prizes and things after that, and then we'll have an after party that evening at our clubhouse uh, to help uh, with all of our local members and the members that travel from other states to come and support us uh, and try to do some more fundraiser for the ARC. Outstanding. And so, uh, forgive me, I don't know where Hooligans Harley Davidson is. Is that it is which it's in location? It's here in Oxford okay. off of uh, so that's the that Harley Davis Loop. Loop. Yeah. The Harley so is there like requirements job. to be in the Punishers? You have to be a fireman, military, first responder? Top or like-minded. Or like-minded. Uh, but you do have to go through a screening background process uh, to be accepted in. Sure. Uh, no is there any requirements on the cop motorcycle you got to have? I mean, can somebody come in on with, with like a scooter or a moped or seven fifty cc? That's all they got. So, so you got to have. So there is a requirement. <laughs> is a requirement. <laughs> all right, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's pretty good. Very good. Yeah. So I have to be able to ride a motorcycle to be a part of the. Uh, Punishers Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club? Unfortunately, you could not be a part of the Punishers. We are an all male club. However, and I'll let if that you slide. want to learn to ride a motorcycle, we have plenty of ladies support groups uh, that also support us, and we'd love to have you a part of them. That was a good recovery. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, super good. So the um, there's there's food before the ride and there's fellowship after the ride and um, everybody that rides pays a fee to to ride and that's part of the fundraising. It is twenty dollars uh, for the riders, five dollars for the passenger, and five dollars for the lunch. Okay, super good. All right, wonderful. And and you got involved with the Punishers? How? Um, my experience goes back to years with my wife um, and she was the executive director here with the ARC and um, this is the sixth year of, of the ARC ride and so I um, jumped in one year and helped her um, with the event and so from there it has been to where it drawn me back in to ride motorcycles again and then so I was bit and then just helping her with the arc and having that involvement around the clients uh, that, that Patty now serves is just tremendous when you really see this agency and how they, the, how they help these individuals. And then so as um, my part of being in service to others with the Punishers, I wanted to reach out to the ARC and take this ride event on and promote it and see how we could really um, make it big and make it a community thing and not just a small little ride. Outstanding. You know, mm -hmm. uh, those of us that work at nonprofits have um, a way of dragging all of our family members in with us because it, it's not just something that we do, it's something that we are. and so. That's really great. That uh, and that's the same thing to, for to get in. firemen and law enforcement, first responders, military. That's kind of it's kind of the same mantra. Mm -hmm. um, people that are in, in first responders, law enforcement, firefighters, military. It's not what they do; it's who they are. So it's people don't separate the two that do that kind of work. Uh, they do it because it matters to them, just as people who get involved with nonprofits, such as Second Chance and the mm -hmm. ARC, they do it because they believe in it. Exactly. And I, I think, Susan, to answer that question directly uh, for me, how I got involved is uh, it's who I am, uh, it, to be in service to others. Uh, it follows with the uh, motto of our club. Um, one of the brothers that joined, uh, he kind of came, introduced who the Punishers were, what they did, and I'm like, my heart was in it. And, you know, from there, uh, I've been able to build with the brothers that we have here locally. And so that's what we do. That's excellent. It feels really good to be a part of something. Absolutely. And so how many members does the Punishers local club here have? Um, we are at 10 members now. Uh, we were about 22. And uh, with that, if you understand uh, a big team, it's like herding cats. I understand. So now we have a Hatchet Creek uh, that is up in the Lineville area. Uh, they're 11. 
I think they're still growing. And then we also have one here locally out of Moody, uh, the Blue Devil chapter. So, you know, between all of us, there's probably right at 40 of us within the local area, within 30 minutes of here. Outstanding, that's great. And the more you have, uh, the, the more you have. And that's so, right. So that's fabulous. All right, well, thank you. We will be back in just a minute. This portion of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, sponsored by A1 Freedom Bail, Bonding Incorporated, 256-236-7888. Bianca Patrick, Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, obstruct justice using false ID. Richard McCulley, Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, possession of controlled substance. Tyrek Norris, Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, possession of marijuana first. Johnny Barksdale Jr., Anniston, Alabama, failure to appear, possession of marijuana first. Jasmine Fleming, Anniston, Alabama, probation violation, possession of controlled substance. If you have any information about these cases, please call 1-833-251-7867. So that's the second half of the lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Remember, you call, they haul. It is 256-236-6600. So we're back with um, Sean from The Punishers and Patty Tiller, the Executive Director at The ARC. And Patty's going to tell us a little bit more about The ARC and, and about the event. Well, we are so pleased to have The Punishers involved with us and supporting us. Um, this year on this ride. Uh, that's very important, not only to uh, help our programs, but for our individuals. Um, we serve people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and they love, and I'm, I'm stressing love, to come out and be a part of this event. Um, the, the bikers are so nice to get uh, them involved and allow them to come sit on some of the bikes you know, with permission, of course, and, and get them to participate into the community. And so that's helping not only financially support our program by the fundraiser that they're doing, but also expands our program to get our folks in, um, involved in social events and some communication. And we absolutely love that. Um, we, are, we stay very, very busy. And we, when we can get help from the community, like from these wonderful guys with Sean and Ron and the whole team and all the other people that are going to be involved in this event, uh, we, it makes our job easier. Absolutely. Excellent. Very good. Patty and I have known each other for quite a while. Patty was on the board of directors at Second Chance for, for a great deal of time, and, and it's nice to have you on today and be able to, to yeah. interact. And, yeah. Catch up. <laughs> Catch up a little bit. Yeah, because it's been a minute. It, it has been. It? Yeah. it has been. For those that's watching, what does the ARC stand for? Well, the ARC... Is it an acronym? No. It began as an acronym when the, uh, the agency started nationally many, many years ago, but um, the acronym involved the R word, uh -huh. which we don't say anymore because we try to encourage the term intellectually, um, you know, disability, disabled. Uh, we really don't even want to use the word disabled. We use something called people first language, a person with an intellectual disability. So the ARC and now uh, is big A, little r, little c, and we see it more as like an ARC, a shelter of, a, of an ARC, you know, the, the ARC and reaching into helping our folks get from one point to another. And it's a national organization as well. It is, it is. Um, and we actually just celebrated our 60th birthday locally so um, in February, so you know, a few months ago. So it's been a, a minute that we've been involved in, in helping people of all ages with intellectual and developmental disabilities. One of the best uh, days that I can remember having, I participated in Leadership Calhoun County. And one of the best days that we had with Leadership Calhoun County was getting to come to the ARC and spend time with the people that go there because they definitely will make your day uh, oh, yeah. brighter and make you smile and uh, and uh, just wonderful people there. So that was one of my best days that I can remember having was uh, being a part of that and uh, especially the puppets. Do you still do the puppets? We have, well, the puppets kind of got sidelined during COVID. Um, we did 
a program for RMC with the puppets for, to teach kids about uh, COVID safety and things like that. And that was an ongoing project. But we've only, we're just now getting the puppets back out into the community because we were not able to go into the school systems as much. But we would love to get it in full force coming up in the fall. And that's a wonderful, wonderful program. Anybody that's ever seen it, I think, uh, brings a smile to their face. Yeah. So. Kids on the Block, they teach people with uh, about uh, various disabilities, but also some social concerns like bullying and anti-gang and uh, even some home issues like divorce and sibling rivalry and self-esteem and it's a fun program to do. The puppets are awesome. They, <laughs> are. Absolutely they are awesome. So are. the event then on the 17th is uh, open to the public as well, right? That is correct. It's open to the public as long as it's street legal vehicle or motorcycle come ride with us come hang out come enjoy the day and, and I can come and eat with you and yeah, absolutely you then come and have lunch with fellowship us. with you afterwards right. at the at uh, which church Golden Springs Baptist Church. Golden Springs Baptist and that's after the ride at that about two o'clock um, between two and two thirty okay. um, is where we're looking um, to be able to have folks there uh, to welcome, to greet you in. Uh, the ride will probably be coming in a little bit after that, but then the door prizes and stuff like that will follow as soon as the ride returns. We like door prizes. So um, if somebody wanted to contribute a door prize, how would we go about doing that? Um, they can contact uh, myself or um, the ARC and they can get them turned in that way. Uh, Alabama Punishers, Lee Mac, that's L-E-M-C, Mount Cheha chapter, um, and then the ARC's information is be shared as well. Yes, we're at uh, 401 Noble Street, so people can just knock on the door and bring it on in and we'll hold it for the ride or they can contact us at 256-236-2857. Wonderful, that's great. You know, fundraising has been difficult um, since, since COVID, uh, you know, during the COVID when we didn't know what the heck was going on with that. And then after, it's just been difficult to get back into fundraising mode and so, Congratulations on, on making this ride work. And so you guys are, uh, the route's gonna be down Highway 21 to Piedmont, is that right? Uh, we will go out 78, um, we'll head down Highway 9, uh, we'll go out Rabbit Town Road to Piedmont. On the way back, we'll take White's Gap, go over Cottaquilla Road, uh, get a little mountain ride in yes, there. Yes. And then come back um, down, uh, Chocolaca Road to Golden Springs. Okay, that'll be quite a ride. That's awesome. It Wonderful. will be. Yeah. And you know, you were saying that fundraising has been difficult during COVID. Well, it was easier, at least for us. Some of the programs, like we were talking about with the puppets, slowed down during COVID, mm -hmm. but everything is in full force again now, yes. which means we have more individuals working. Our summer camps for kids are open and back to their normal pre-COVID numbers, our adult camp, our, our Special Olympics, everything's going. So it's very important for the, the community to step back up and get yes. as involved as Absolutely. they were. That yeah. is awesome. And, and I, I hope the fundraiser goes really well. We will be looking forward to that. We'll be, we'll be back with you in just a minute. From Crime Stoppers, between March 30th and May 21, 2023, a residence on Earl Roberts Road in Anniston was burglarized. A five foot, five by eight foot flatbed utility trailer with a wooden floor and a 20 gallon Craftsman air compressor were stolen. On May 24th, 2023, an unknown female in a gray Honda sedan stole some flowers from a gravesite at Seven Springs Cemetery in Jacksonville. On May 5th, 2023, a mailbox was damaged at a residence on Red Road 55 in Anniston. The suspect vehicle was a full-size white Dodge Ram pickup. If you have any information about these cases, please call 1-833-251-7867. Stupid! Y'all so stupid! Always ready for the crazy criminals, yes. a favorite part of the show. And uh, this week is no different. Uh, this happened in Kissimmee, Florida, I believe. And I'm going to uh, kill my chief deputy for getting me a crazy criminal with these kind of names because it's stretching my educational boundaries. <laughs> uh, but Martin Gonzalez Garcia and I think Ashley's 
Roden Ocasio. Mine works. Uh, yeah. Close enough. Uh, they both got arrested because they butt dialed 911. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, if you're burglarizing a house and while you're committing such crime, uh, having that cell phone in your pocket and it butt dials 911, the police will come. Even if you hang up, they're coming. And uh, so as they were burglarizing the house, all of a sudden they were uh, surprised when officers come in and said, hey, uh, what's going on? And they said, you called 911 and they're <laughs> holding like the bag of goodies in their hand. So. But the police were actually looking for uh, Gonzalez Garcia because he had also burglarized a Dollar General earlier in the day. Mm. So they were on a crime spree, but they are now locked up in Kissimmee, Florida uh, for their uh, uh, thievery and burglarisms, uh, all because they had a butt down. And we say bless their hearts. Yep. Well, and we appreciate the help. And uh, if anybody wants to commit a crime, Go, if, you know, we hope you don't, but if you do, go ahead and call 911 and let us know what you're doing and where you're at and we'll come help you out. That's just perfect. That's just perfect. That's just perfect. Well, hopefully we'll see you next week, but not in the lineup. Or on not County. in the lineup. Thank you.